Hey everyone, we're at the NVIDIA suite at CES 2019, and I am joined again by Justin Walker at NVIDIA. We spoke previously at the Germany event. Yes, we did. For the Turing Unveil. This time the topic is, it's, it's kind of going back to that, uh, the, the unveil of Turing, but we didn't really get into more of the information on floating point versus integer and, and how that pipeline has shifted a bit with the new architecture. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Deepcool Captain 240 Pro AIO Cooler. The Captain 240 Pro uses a bladder within the water tank to expand and contract based upon liquid temperature as a leak prevention mechanism. This works by burping air at higher temperatures, making for a unique closed loop liquid cooler design. The Captain 240 Pro also expands upon the existing Captain series by extending tube length for more flexible positioning and updating the LEDs. Learn more at the link in the description below. So, if you missed our initial coverage, we did do a, a bit of a deep dive on the Turing architecture, but it's been a little while. So let's, mm -hmm. let's kind of recap it. Sure. Why, why are we even talking about floating point versus integer? Uh, or actually, we should probably just do a, a really quick elevator pitch of wh what is that. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're talking instruction types, I guess, ultimately. Right. But so a so, uh, top level recap, you know, floating point versus integer. Sure. So floating point and integer is just two different uh, numerical formats. Right, I mean the the GPU is essentially just doing math, and the and floating point or integer are two different numerical formats that you can input into the GPU to do that math and to help calculate, um, you know, the right the right color values mm -hmm. and qualities for for the pixels. Um, and depending on the workload you're doing, uh, you could be using integer, you could be using floating point. Right, and floating point you'll hear uh, like FP16, FP32, stuff like that. That's right. Might hear it referred to as single or double or half precision. That's correct. Uh, so you, you get a number of decimal points depending on on what kind of floating point uh, precision you're dealing with. And with the integer, I guess it's it's more or less a whole number. Yes. So like one, similar. one or two or whatever. Right. Um, an example on the interface of a game where you might see integer. Uh, in speaking with some developers of of some strategy games, I've learned that uh, resource count, for example, might be used where you never have anything except whole number. Uh, it's it's pushed off to the CPU typically in those games. But GPU, at least with Tori now, there is more ability to work with integer than previously. That's right. So. Yeah. With Pascal, what, how did it work? You were flipping So with, with Pascal, um, our, our execution cores could flip between either floating point or integer. Mm -hmm. So if you have a floating point instructions, you run it as floating point. If an integer instruction comes along, you stop running the floating point, and you start running integer. Right. So, so is that, either is that a, effectively an interrupt? Or um, is, is, it's, uh, it's a swap. You just swap okay. between, the, between the two. Right. Um, and floating point has been, uh, you know, traditionally in the past, floating point, specifically FP32, has been um, you know the common format, mm -hmm. and so that's why that's why with Pascal, actually most of it was you know back in the day most of it was just floating point. Right. Um, but you know with more modern and complex games, you get more and more of the integer math. Um, and with Turing, we updated the the architecture to be able to um, process that integer and floating point mm -hmm. math in parallel. Right. So then, uh, to that point, what is an example of when you encounter integer? Right. Because Floating point for sure is is uh, I don't know is, is it safe to say it's the most uh, most common of the two yeah. used for games yeah, for right sure. um, so when do you encounter integer um, so generally speaking as the game gets more and more complex and you're mm -hmm. trying to do more and more complex things in the shaders um, you'll hit more integer math and more specifically um, a lot of times compute uh, when you're running the more complex compute shaders they'll tend to generate much more integer math okay so uh, games that would do that then. Um, there's Wolfenstein. a there, yeah. There's a bunch of examples of it. Uh, you know, Wolfenstein Two is one that does a, a ton of integer math. Mm -hmm. um, Call of Duty, uh, Battlefront Two, uh, Shadow of War, just to okay. name a few. You know, a lot of the the some of the more modern titles that are doing more complex work and more complex compute workloads tend to use a more integer math. Okay, uh, so then in, in Turing, when you get uh, an integer instruction as opposed to Pascal, and what's what is ultimately the the sort of not necessarily a, a firm number. What's what sort of performance difference are you looking at, though? Um, it, it can be very. It can be fairly significant, right? Okay. I mean, you take um, let's just take Wolfenstein as an mm -hmm. example. You know, an average. You know, there's maybe twenty or thirty percent of um, of the work uh, of the instruction sets are as integer. Integer, okay. And on Pascal, um, for any of those integers, we'd stop doing the FP32 and we'd do the the integer math. Okay. And then you'd flip back to the FP32. Right. Uh, on Turing, you can just run both of those concurrently. So if 30% of the instructions are, are integer, mm -hmm. we don't have to stop doing any of the floating point calculations. We have separate hardware that will just run through that integer math right in parallel. Right, and that's dedicated hardware? And that's dedicated hardware, Okay. Yeah. So then in, in uh, theoretical scenarios, you have maybe a 100% integer or 100% floating point scenario. 
and it's just doing only floating point. Mm -hmm. That integer hardware, I guess, it's it's just idle. Like it's, it's uh, if it's uh, only floating point, yeah, you're yeah, just you're okay. just using the floating point hardware. Okay, so then integer instruction comes down the pipe, mm -hmm. and uh, it just push off to yeah. You have a separate you have a separate execution cores to okay. run the integer map. Um, is that all? So the the floating point versus integer uh, units, I guess, is that all in the SMs? Like it's yeah. it's within the same block. Yes, that's okay. all. It's all within the SM. It's all. Okay. Uh, it's all within the, the the general computing cores. Okay, and we can find a, a block diagram too and put that yeah. on the screen uh, for reference. Um, okay, so we have some good examples of games that would use compute workloads, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this might be a game developer question, so feel free to push it off to them. Sure. But are there any uh, firm examples you can give of, of like a a, a certain type of um, computation or visual effect or like in game as a player of the game mm. is there anything I can look at regularly and say that's integer yeah that's you're not really <laughs> going to be able to that yeah. that happens at such a deep level in the engine yeah. that you're never you're not it's not something you're going to go see on the screen right, it's right. more of kind of a deeper level implementation sure. detail and I mean the reason the reason we see it of course is because we we at NVIDIA, we have to analyze tools, all the right? yeah we yeah. have to analyze all the workloads coming in from the game so we can we can see this trend of more and more integer mm -hmm. um, uh, more and more requirements for integer math right and of course that's what drove the decision to have separate um, execution units in turn is this uh, is this typically something that's is it happening more on an engine level like as engines develop where it's, there's more trend towards integer. Or just um, like individual developers. It's at an engine as well. I okay. mean, it, it can happen at both levels. It's more just it happens to be an efficient way to do the things that the game developers are mm -hmm. trying to do. Sure. Um, and it's just a way to optimize some of the things that the game developers are trying to do. Okay. So it kind of gets implemented down from there. And uh, and again, this is this is probably like an Epic Games or one of those engine developer questions. But sure. uh, my understanding is that in a lot of instances, the game programmer is making the game, not the engine programmer, the game programmer, just sort of it builds what they want, and then lets the engine figure out what's going on. I guess. Yeah, I mean that'd be a great question for, for right, them. Right. from from how I understand it. That's generally the way they would think about it. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to do what I what I want to do to make the right. effect look good, to make the game look good, and kind of let the let the lower level systems in the in the engine right. kind of figure out how to how to do the math, filter it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, we'll put um we'll have some block diagrams in here you can look at, and we do have a deep dive talking about the Turing architecture when it first was discussed in Germany. So if you want to check that out, it's a couple months old. We have it on the channel. Um, Justin, thank you for joining me. Sure, thank you. Appreciate Always the overview. No problem. We'll see you all next time.